Good morning, everybody. Whoa, that's like really loud. Good morning. I'm like Darth Vader up here now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to talk about one thing and tuck this down here so it's not like I'm shouting at everybody. 40 Days is coming up in January, and it's going to be a really big group because um, Lisa and I are leading it this time, and it's going to be 10 times awesome. So we have the books out in the lobby. You don't need to have a book for the 40 Days program because we'll be giving you all the information that you need, but if you want a little bit extra, it's nice to have. Um, so that starts on January 8th, and it's Thursday nights here in Lancaster in the big room from 7 to 8 p.m. So it's not a practice or anything. It's just a discussion. That's what the meetings are. And then the whole program is meditation and yoga practice and there's a dietary component and journaling and like all of these really good things to completely clean out your whole body and prepare you for the rest of 2015. So if you're interested, it's only $99. And if you're on the fence or thinking about it or think maybe I'll just wait a little bit longer, I definitely wouldn't wait because it's gonna fill up quick. So if you have questions, let me know. Let's get started in child's pose. Just kidding, soup to Baddha Konasana. Let's start there instead. I'm going to keep you on your toes this morning. Soles of the feet together, knees open wide. And take a few moments to settle down into the floor. Let your body be heavy down on the floor. Press the soles of your feet together. And you can rest your hands wherever you want. I like to have one hand over my heart and one hand over my belly. Just give your hands a place to rest. You've got a few moments here to really sink down into your mat, to anchor down into the floor. And for your whole practice today, I want you to think about the idea of um, those cables that hold up telephone poles or that hold up uh, really tall structures, like the really strong ones that are anchored all the way down into the ground. And imagine that those kind of cables are attached to whatever part of your body is touching the ground throughout your practice. So when you're in down dog, like the cables are coming out of your fingertips and into the floor. Or the cables are coming out of your heels and down through your mat and into the floor. So you're not just standing on the ground. You're not just pressing your hands into the ground, but it's literally through the earth. There's so much grounding happening. So cables coming down through your back into the floor here, the back of your head anchored down to the floor. And start to create breath from that space, totally anchored down, stable in the center right now from the start, and then add your breath. Long inhales, long, long exhales. Make your exhales loud so the person next to you can hear. Loud exhales, that four part breath. So it's a long inhale with a pause at the top and then a long exhale with a pause at the bottom. And you can use that four part breath as those cables to anchor yourself into your body. Keep your breath going, draw your knees together, hug them into your chest, and rock around on your low back. Lots of breath. And interlace your fingers behind your head, bent knees, flex your feet for bicycles. Keep your breath going. Yeah, opposite elbow to opposite knee, go for it. So you can go quicker, you can go slow. But I want you to go at a pace where you can keep your feet flexed, a pace where you can still breathe. So it might be a little bit slower than you think. Lots of control. Tether your navel down towards the floor, like there's a cable on the back of your low belly and it pulls it straight down. Keep going. 10, 9, 8, 
seven, relax your face, six, five, four, three, two, one. Knees into your chest, give them a squeeze. And send your legs straight up in the air. Tuck your fingertips underneath your butt. Legs straight up in the air, flex your feet. Lower your right leg down 30 degrees. Lots of breath here, use your breath. Let it fill your whole body up and heat from the inside out. From the center of your core, out to your fingertips, out to your toes. Lower your foot another 30. If you can't hear your neighbor breathing, help them out. It's easier when you breathe. Lower your foot and hover it just above the ground. Navel down towards the ground, pull it down. Leg back up in the air. Left leg down, 30 degrees. Flex your feet. Eyes on one focal point, like your gaze has a cable. It's tethered to one spot. Another 30. Keep breathing. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Hover your foot just above the ground. Press through your heels. Send energy out through your heel. Leg back up in the sky. Knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. Oh, rock around. Rock forward and back until you sit up and make your way to downward facing dog. Downward facing dog. So now you can move around in your down dog. Now that there's blood flowing, there's things already happening. The shift can already start to happen. So cables in your fingertips down into the floor, cables in each one of your toes down into the ground. Inhale up on your tippy toes. Exhale, root your heels down. Lengthen out your legs, soft knees. Inhale, tippy toes, soften your knees. Exhale, root your heels down. Keep your knees soft. One more time, tippy toes. Root your heels down on your exhale. And step forward, feet to hands. Halfway lift, pause in your halfway lift. Lengthen out your spine, bend your knees more than you normally do. More than you normally do, send your tailbone straight out behind you. So you've got a long, flat back that you could set a glass of water on and it wouldn't spill. Keep breathing. Hug your shoulder blades on the back side of your body, towards your spine. Nice, low belly in and up. Take one more breath here, lengthen out, hang and ragdoll. Any arm variation you want, shake out your head, yes or no if you want. Tension cables down through your heels into the floor. So your feet straight ahead at 12 o'clock, straight ahead to the windows, and anchor them down. So you've got all this stable foundation to work with, and the rest of your practice, you can use that to find freedom in the rest of your body. Release your hands down, and rise all the way up to standing. Reach through your fingertips. Bring your thumbs to your heart. Set an intention for your practice. Choose one big word. One word, something that pops into your head, something that you've been carrying with you. One that you have to go for, not one that's like, oh, it's kind of, okay, I'll pick that. Something you want. We'll send out all those intentions with three ohms. Take a deep breath in. Send your hands way up, forward fold. Halfway lift, long spine, soft knees, high to low plank, step back. Inhale, upward facing dog, lots of time, shoulder blades back, downward facing dog, lift your hips. Big breath in together, breath out together. Breath in, fill up, breath out, heels down towards the ground, one more breath in. Exhale and empty. Move forward, feet to hands. Halfway lift, long spine. Fold down. Rise up to standing. Cables through your heels. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Lower to elbow height. Make it a smooth transition. Upward facing dog. Open chest. Downward facing dog. Lift your hips. 
Breathe in together. Breathe out together. Thumbs into the floor. Breath in. Breath out. One more. Fill up. Let it all out. Let it all go. Move forward. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Fold down. Rise to standing. Feet in the ground. Reach way up. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Inhale. Chaturanga on your exhale. There's no rush. It's fluid with your breath. Up dog. Breathe in. Down dog. Breathe out. Long inhale. Long exhale. Eyes on one spot. Breath in. Breath out. One more. Feel yourself up. Ribs expand. Empty all the way out. Step or jump. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Bow down. Chair pose. Sit back and pause. Down in it. Keep your breath flowing though. It's really powerful right now. Keep flowing. Like there's one of those cables attached to your tailbone. Send it to the back edge of your mat. Way down to the back edge of your mat. And then reach the crown of your head away from it so your spine gets really, really long. Sit a little bit lower. Keep breathing. One more inhale. Lift your fingertips. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Soft knees. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot through, warrior one. Land on empty, rise up on your inhale. Reach, 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 chaturanga. Take your time. Full inhale in your up dog. Full exhale in your down dog. On empty, left foot steps, warrior one. Rise up, heart up. Chaturanga, hands to the floor. Upward facing. Downward facing. Breathe together. Make that connection to the person next to you. Fill up the space with that sound. Take one more breath in. Let it out. Step or jump. Halfway lift. Fold down. Chair pose for one breath. Reach. Fold. Halfway. Send your tailbone back. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Right foot warrior one, land a whole inhale to send your hands up, whole exhale to take them down, chaturanga. Upward facing, downward facing, left foot, step, cables through your toes into the ground, chaturanga. Up dog, downward facing dog, breathe in together, breathe out, good, send your tailbone back, breathe in. Breathe out, thigh bones back, one more in, one more out, step or jump, halfway lift, full breath, fold down, empty, chair pose, sit back and lift your toes, lift your low belly, fold, halfway, get long, chaturanga, you're doing awesome, stay in the rhythm, upward facing, downward facing, warrior one, right side, step on empty, hands up, breathe in, reach up. Chaturanga. Up dog, shoulder blades back at wide, downward facing dog. Opposite foot, step, use your breath, lift it up. Chaturanga. Up dog, flat palms, down dog. Breath in, breath out. Let your head hang between your arms, breath in, breath out. One more, fill up, let it out through your mouth. Step or jump. Halfway lift. Bow. Chair pose. Utkatasana. Reach. Be light. Fold. Halfway. Chaturanga. It's your last sun B. Powerful breath. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Right foot warrior one. Step and reach. Lift your heart up and back. Chaturanga. <clears throat> Upward facing. Downward facing. Left foot, step and rise. No rush, just rhythm. Chaturanga. Beautiful. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Breathe. Land here. Cables through your toes, through your fingers. Really land, really connect. Send your right leg up to the sky. Keep breathing. Breath is excellent right now. Get lost in it. Heel towards your butt, open your hip. Then flip your dog. Keep the breath going. 
So you know that you've gone a little bit too far, like you've gone into overwhelm when you lose the rhythm of your breath. So if going right into a wheel here means that you lose the breath, don't go into wheel. Stay in the flip dog. Stay in your wild thing. Peel your chest open and fill it with breath. Flip back over, right side plank, face the purple wall. Stick with an original side plank. Squeeze your inner thighs together. We'll get to the lifted leg part, so just stay here for now. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Flex your feet a lot. Reach through your fingertips a lot. Energy out your fingertips through the rafters. Now flex your foot so much that your flexed foot lifts your leg up. Like there's so much action going on in your foot and your toes that you can't help it. It just floats right up. Beautiful. More breath. One more inhale, reach, hands to the ground, chaturanga, plenty of time. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. One breath in, one breath out. Left leg up to the sky, land in the rhythm, heel towards your butt, open your hip, flip your dog. Drive your feet into the ground to lift your hips up to the ceiling. So if the wheel is there, yes, go. If you can, you must. But if you're in that space of overwhelm and you can't catch your breath, just don't go that far. Be here and be awesome right here. Flip back over, left side plank, face the yellow wall. Open up, reach yourself apart. So start with the original side plank. Start with integration in your low belly, integration of your shoulder blades on your back. Now breathe. When you've got the rhythm, when your whole body's full of breath, then send your leg up to the sky. Move from your bones to lift your leg up to the sky, your toes to lift your leg up to the sky. Beautiful, low belly in, pull it in. Take one more breath, reach, get big. Hands to the floor, chaturanga. Easy and light, upward facing dog, big breath. Downward facing dog, empty out. Breath in through your nose, sigh it out. Nice, make it louder. Breath in, breath out. Sink your thumbs down. One more breath in, one more breath out. Right foot crescent lunge, step and rise up. Keep your breath going. Crescent lunge is that spot for a lot of people where you're like, oh, pose, and then you totally drop the breath. Everybody does it, it's the weirdest thing. It's like the cool thing to do, landing crescent lunge and stop breathing. So start. Stack your back heel over the ball of your back foot. Like draw your left hip forward. There's so much action in your back heel right now that it literally presses your left hip forward and squares your hips to the bricks. Yeah. Now where are the cables? Your fingertips, your toes. Straight up and straight down. Now hook your thumbs and take a baby back bend. Lift from your upper back. Lift from that space right behind your heart because you've got the cables in your feet to make that happen. You have the stable foundation to go way up and back. Go a little bit further than you think you can because you've got the foundation today to do it. You've got the stability to do it. Hands to heart center, pause, pull everything in. Twist to the right. Recreate your breath. Land in it over and over. Open your arms. So if you had that ability to re-anchor every single time you felt a little bit unstable, you felt like you got knocked off center in your life, where would you send the cables? Like physically in your body, where would you send those tethering cables to make the pose happen? Press your left hamstring up to the sky. Yeah. Now smooth, like you got all kinds of time. Come back up to crescent lunge, lift your heart up to the ceiling. Warrior two, open up to the purple wall. Sink down into your feet. Take up a lot of space. Lots of space in your warrior two. So I want you to take your warrior two to a space where you're like, I can't possibly hold this deep of a lunge and then back out for a breath and then come back into it. So this is a mobile warrior two. You're coming in and out of a lunge and you're playing around with your edge right here. So go so deep that you're like, I couldn't possibly hold that for like even three breaths and then you back off a little bit. Then you come back into it, build some endurance, and back off a little bit. Build the strength, recreate your breath, come back to that. So find a middle ground between I can't hold this and this is way too easy. Find the middle ground. 
Anchor your front big toe down into the ground. Flip your front palm, reach forward, reverse the warrior. Lots of breath. So the heat from the outside in, yes, of course, because that's going on in the room right now, but heat from the inside out, like energy and cleaning out and flushing out from the inside out. That's happening right now. Heat from the inside, from the center of your core, up to your fingertips, down to your toes. Back to warrior two arms. Extended side angle, bring your elbow to your thigh or fingertips down to the ground. Keep breathing. Get really long through your side waist and then tuck your top shoulder down into your back like it's trying to kiss your spine. More breath. Lots of breath, half bind. Take your top arm behind your back. Pause with the half bind. Even if you know you can take the full one, just do the half bind. Top arm behind your back and then peel your left shoulder back to the person behind you. So you can lift your head up to the ceiling. Keep breathing. I know your legs are talking to you. Just breathe into them. Breathe into that sensation. You've got one more inhale. Look up at the ceiling. Hands to the floor. Chaturanga. Whew. Good morning, hips. Happy Sunday. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breathe in together. Let it out through your mouth. Let the extra heat go. Breath in. Breath out. Soften your knees. One more breath in. One more breath out. Left foot crescent lunge. Step and rise up. Step and go. Press your foot down, hands high. Lots of breath. Like before you even make all the micro adjustments, make your breath happen so that when you make the micro adjustments, they're more present. They're an active choice instead of like, well, this is what I always do when I land in crescent lunge. Breathe so that you can stay here. Do you really need those adjustments? Maybe you need something else. Squeeze your ribs together on the front side of your body and then go up and back. Baby back bend in your upper back. Shoulder blades that scoop your chest up to the ceiling, that serve it up so all kinds of space can fill you up. Cables and tethers in your toes, press them down and go back a little bit further than you think you can because the space is there now. The space is there now for you to go back a tiny bit more. Nice, Kathy. Hands to heart center, twist to the left. Ooh, pause with your hands at heart center. Pause in the twist. Make a lot of breath happen so the pose lightens up and then open your arms. So you don't have to open it right when you twist. You've got time to decide when you open your arms. You don't even have to open them at all if you don't want. Energize your fingertips. Keep breathing. Pull your low belly in, way in, so you can take it over your thigh and into your twist with you. Yeah. Okay, anchor your feet down, press them into the floor, come back up to crescent lunge, reach up high, warrior two. Lots of time, open up to the yellow wall. <clears throat> Same idea on this side, you settle into your warrior two and then lunge so deep that you're like, whoa, that's definitely my limit right there. And then back off a little bit, straighten your leg a little bit, soften it, and then come back into it. Just go back and forth, use your breath. There's not a particular amount of times that you need to do it. You're just creating space around the joint of your knee and you're building endurance in the muscles in your legs. Because before you know it, you'll be able to go into that deep lunge and you're like, wait a minute, that's not so hard anymore. So land in the in-between, the warrior two that works best right now. Flip your front palm, reach forward, reverse. Pick up your low belly and lift it way up. Heat from the inside out, it's called tapas. It's that heat energy from the inside out of your body. Send tapas to your fingertips. Down into the outer edge of your right foot. Warrior two arms, extended side angle. The sweat is good, keep sweating, let it happen. Breathe, eyes on one focal point. Your practice can become so simple like that. The tapas, the heat from the inside out, your breath, and your focal point. That's it. That's all you've got to focus on. Breath and focal point. Toes in the ground, a low belly that pulls in and up. Now take the half bind, top arm behind your back. Peel your shoulder open. 
If it feels like there's a ton of work going on in your front leg, use your back leg. Pay attention to your back leg and squeeze muscle to bone there so your front leg doesn't have to work so hard. Make it easy, don't make it hard. Take one more breath in, up at the ceiling, hands to the floor, chaturanga. You're doing awesome, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Let's do lion's breath, stick out your tongue on your exhale, breathe in. <sighs> Make it loud, breath in, really let it go. Yes, one more in. Let it out, step or jump, feet to hands. Halfway lift, long spine, long spine. Ooh, stay in your halfway lift, soften your knees, send your tailbone straight back, so reconnect to this halfway lift, then fold down. Chair pose, go for it. A cable on your tailbone to the back edge of your mat, through your mat and into the floor. So you can sit deep because even your hips are part of your pose. Even your hip crease is working for you here. So there's a hip crease happening, toes off the ground. Sit a little bit deeper. Some of you don't have a hip crease going on. Yeah, hands to heart center, twist right. It's like you're sitting in a chair, not leaning against a wall. Open your arms. Wide open arms. So you have the option to have your bottom arm on the outside of your knee or in between your knees. And then go for a half bind. Top arm behind your back around the outside of your hip. Just the half bind. Sit a little bit lower in your hips and then lift your heart up higher. Like you want your heart to face the yellow wall or maybe even the ceiling. Yeah, keep breathing. I know, stay in the fire. It's cooking, it's burning things off right now. It's a good thing. You've got this, eyes on one focal point. Back up to chair pose, one inhale, lift, 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 forward fold. Ugh. Separate your feet and take your first two fingers around your big toes. Bend your knees a lot. Bend your knees a lot, lay your stomach on your thighs, glue them together, keep them glued and then do your best to tip your tailbone up to the ceiling. So if tailbone up means that your stomach's not connected to your thighs anymore, re-bend your knees, remake that connection, just your tailbone up. So it could be the tiniest shift and I might not even be able to see it, but you can feel it happen. You can feel that tiny shift as it lifts up. Make more breath happen. And release your hands and go to crow pose. So cables in your fingertips through the center of your palm down into the ground. So you could really do anything in your crow pose here. You could press down so much, there's so much stability in your foundation of your hands that your knees get light on the backs of your arms. Like you could lift your low belly up and lift your knees off the backs of your arms. Doesn't have to physically happen with the ideas there. So your knees get light. Yeah, flex your feet, spread your toes. You've got one more breath. Step back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, open your chest, wide collarbones. Downward facing dog. Breathe in together. Breathe out together. Anchor, breath in, breath out. One more in, one more out. Step or float, feet to hands. Halfway lift, bow down. Chair pose, sit deep. Deep hip crease. Yeah, deep hip crease and then pull your low belly in. So the crease is happening at your hips. And I could see it if I looked at you, lift your toes off the mat. Hands to heart center, twist left. Can you hear your neighbor breathing? Can you help them out? Spread your arms apart. Choose the bottom arm pl placement that works best for you. And then take your top arm way back and around. So it's like your shoulder rotates all the way back and there's plenty of space. Plenty of space. Tuck your top shoulder down into your back, towards your spine, make it kiss your spine. Fire in your low belly, energy in your fingertips, top us. Come back up to chair pose, one breath, forward fold. Uh, separate your feet and step on your palms for gorilla. It's a sweaty one today. That's good. Toes up to your wrists. Let the sweat drip. That's all that extra junk that you've been carrying around, all of those thoughts and everything. It comes out in your sweat. 
It's great. Get rid of it. So bend your knees a lot again, stomach on your thighs, tailbone up to the sky. So it's just little micro movements, micro adjustments. The more you soften your quads here, the more space you'll have in your hamstrings to send your tailbone up. You've got space when you soften. There's room in your joints for that. There's room in your muscle for that. Release your hands, step your feet mat with distance apart, and sink down into your hips for goddess squat. Down into your hips. Elbows on the insides of your knees to press your legs apart, then lift your heart up towards your thumbs. So it's a little easier just to bring your heart to your chest. Lift your chest up to your thumbs. Yeah. And if this feels super comfortable and you're just kind of hanging out here, press down and lift up like two inches. Yeah, and if you're not hanging out, you can definitely sit on a block. That's a good place to be, too. Keep breathing. Eyes on one spot. Take your right hand in front of your right knee. Cables in your fingertips on the floor. So you can have templed fingertips if you want. Left hand up to the sky. Keep breathing. Wide open chest. Like Peel it open to the ceiling. And maybe you take a half bind and wrap your arm around your back. Half bind, lift up, shoulder blade into your back. And if you've got the range of motion, maybe the full bind. The arm comes in front of your knee and around your back. It's a tight fit for a lot of people. Don't worry about it if you can't catch it. Whew, stay in your squats, switch sides. Left arm in front. You've got your breath, right? It's working for you. Right hand up to the sky. So pause, make the space first before you go to the bind. Arm around your back. Let your hips talk. It's okay. Just have a conversation with your breath. Respond with your breath. Take the full bind if it's there. You can experiment. Peel your chest open. I know it's going to be so awesome when you get to straighten your legs. Stay. Come back to goddess squat press. Just right here. Just right here. Ooh, forward fold. Holy moly. Shake out your legs. Yeah, hip crease. There it is. Shake it out. Bring your feet back together. Hip with distance. Just your hips look great. Rise all the way up to standing. <laughs> Hands up to the ceiling. Right side eagle. Right arm under, right leg over. Ooh. So you've worked, like the sweat's happening. The shift is already happening. Stuff is happening right now. You may not even know what's happening right now, but something's definitely happening. So the balancing series is where you get to let that stuff that's happening settle in. Because you've worked out all the extra stuff and all of your lunges and your twists and you've wrung yourself out. So now you've got clear space. Now you've got the opportunity to tether your gaze to that one spot. That's what Drishti is. It's not just looking at something. It's being totally anchored by your sight to one spot. Sink a little bit lower in your hips. Louder breath. Because you're anchored. You're anchored by your gaze and your foot, so your breath can be really loud. You can play around with that. Keep your eyes anchored. Take airplane. Send your right leg back. Reach your arms behind you. Wrap your shoulder blades toward your spine like upward facing dog in your chest, and then press through your heels. Send it straight to the back of the room. Beautiful. Now, without letting your right foot touch the ground, rise up to standing and bring your right knee into your chest. Right knee up, right hand on your right knee, left hand on your left hip. You've got this tethered in your toes, tethered in the center of your left heel. Now open your knee to the right and reach to the left. All day to get there, all kinds of time. So without looking at it, just thinking about it, can you drop your right hip down? Like, does it feel like your hips are level right now or can you drop the right hip a little bit? And if you step out, no big deal. You just come back to it and make another little adjustment. Come back to center, left hand on your left knee. Reach your right arm behind you for Dancing Shiva. Land in your breath. Use your exhales to drive your heel into the floor. 
your inhales to lift your chest up to the ceiling. Come back to center, place your foot down. Oh, shake out your legs if you need it. Hands up to the sky. Left side eagle, left arm under, left leg over. It's tethered, it's anchored. There's a connection between the two points. More breath, more ujjayi, make it loud. That's what makes it light when your body's like, whoa, I'm starting to get tired. That's the gas. The breath is the gas in your car right now. I stay on your focal point, even through the transition. Take airplane, send your left leg back. I stay focused. Beautiful. Now relax your face because everyone looks like they're about to kick some serious ass right now, which is okay, but just soften a little bit. Flex your foot a lot, drive it to the back of the room. Then draw your left knee forward, use your low belly and pull it straight up. Left hand on your left knee, right hand on your right hip. Catch the balance. Low belly in, shoulder blades together on your back. Open to the purple wall. Reach to the yellow wall. Create more breath. You never know when the person next to you will get so much help. If you breathe and they're like, oh, thank God they're breathing, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. Back to center, switch hands, dancing Shiva, send your left arm back. Flex your lifted foot, make it do something for you. Yeah, all parts of your body working together. All parts contributing to your pose. Back to center, place your foot down. <sighs> Standing bow or dancer's pose. You need a strap for dancers, go for it. If you're even thinking about dancers, come get a strap. If it crossed your mind and you said, uh, I'm not really sure about that, you need a strap for dancers. That's how I can tell when I should do dancers when I'm like, I really don't want to do that right now. <laughs> That's the pose you should do. Go, yogis, go. So there's no rush to standing bow or dancers. You take your time and anchor, create the tethers through your standing foot, a softness in your knee so those tethers, that anchoring feeling can travel up your leg into the rest of your body and then you hit full expression. It's like you're growing up and out of your standing leg. Flex your foot up to the ceiling, eyes on one spot. Where is it? Where can you tether? Got one more breath, release. No rush, you just flew it to the other side. Go for it. To the other side. Maybe you can even transition, experiment with transitioning to the other side while keeping your eyes on that one spot. It's the next step. The more you work just looking physical point to physical point, the more honed in your practice gets it'll start to jump and things will start to change in your practice that you didn't notice before because you're so dialed in. One more breath, release. Switch sides, second set, right into it. Can you go without looking at something else or around the room? Now you can pause in between and take a breath, but keep your eyes on the focal point. Take your pose. So there's easiness because your breath is here, it's working for you, it's helping you out. Softness in your standing knee. Softness there. Flex your lifted foot, serve it up to the ceiling. Release, switch sides. Take your pose. I've never seen a class that has their eyes so dialed in all at the same time. It's usually like a couple people for a little bit and then it moves around. Awesome. Awesome. That builds it. That helps the tapas too. So if you're like, why am I sweating extra right now? It's that. You're making it happen. Take one more breath. Release. Tree pose, right side. Make sure your foot's above or below your knee joint. Then hands start of your heart. 
More breath. Catch the breath here with your hands at your heart. Just catch the breath. Tap into the sensation of your chest literally lifting with your inhale and then going back down with your exhale. Calm and simple, right in the middle. Now take your tree. Any variation you want to go for. The one that just feels right. Cables through the center of your heel, through all five toes into the ground. Now take a chance with your balance and walk your eyes up the front wall and up to the ceiling. You can go as slow as you want. As slow as you want. Switch sides. Hands start at heart center so you can pause and catch the breath. And then take your pose, same variation or different one. Eyes tethered, drishti. And then it's still drishti if you've got focus when you walk your eyes up the wall. There's just a purpose, like you're going one thing at a time, up the wall, up to the ceiling. For an extra challenge, play around with closing your eyes. Release. Feet together at the head of your mat. Oh, inhale, reach up and back. Lift way up and back, up and back like you're going to reach the person behind you. Way up and back, way up and back. Forward fold. Oh. Halfway lift, long spine, softness in your knees, shoulder blades back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Let's get the breath going. Breathe in. Breathe out, soften your knees, breath in, breath out, send your tailbone back, one more in, one more out, right foot warrior one, rise up for one breath, send your hands up to the sky, warrior two, so it's fluid, your joints are moving, your body's shifting, you can just land in just the right spot without overthinking it because you're letting your body do the thinking instead of your mind. Soften the top part of your shoulders and reach through your fingertips more. Now flip your front palm and reach forward. Reverse the warrior. More breath. Just notice that you stopped and restart. Top shoulder blade down into your back and then reach through your fingertips more. Let your fingertips draw you up and back and straighten your front leg. Triangle. Hand down to the floor or block. If you have a block, I'd definitely say block because that keeps you long in your right side waist. You want length there. Fill that space up with your breath. Your right side waist up with your breath. Nice, Tammy, slide down right here. Yeah. So cables out through your fingertips. Then shift forward half moon. So your fingertips keep you light as you shift forward. Fingertips keep you light. So when your right hand comes down to the ground or to your block, it's like just there in case you need it, but your fingertips are light. Like you almost don't need them there. You almost don't need to touch the ground or touch your prop. They can just graze whatever they're touching. Flex your lifted foot a lot to balance that out. You guys look awesome right now. Keep breathing, eyes on one spot. One spot, flex your foot, lift it an inch higher. Warrior two. Turn your toes to face the purple wall, hands on your hips. Now's the time, when your body's like, I'm tired, now's the time. Lift your heart up and hinge down. Send your tailbone up to the sky. Your practice is happening right now. The good stuff is happening right now. So stay here in your body. Make sure that your toes are at least pointed straight ahead, if not a little bit pigeon-toed. Work on drawing your head down to the ground. So if it touches really easy, bring your feet closer together. So it like almost could barely touch, but doesn't quite touch. That gives you more room in your spine to get longer. Send your tailbone up to the ceiling, way up. 
Feet on the ground, press them way down. Where's your breath? Nice, Jess, bring your inner thighs together more, squeeze them together, yes. Press into your palms, inhale to a long, flat back. Turn your right foot forward and walk your hands forward to lizard. Turn your right foot to face the bricks and then both arms on the inside of your front leg. Back heel comes up to the sky. So on the ball of your back foot. So make the adjustments you need to make. Your knee is stacked right on top of your ankles. So if your knee's in front of your ankle, scoot your foot forward a little bit. Good, lots of breath. So your hips are awake. <clears throat> your legs are awake, use them. Make your whole body work so no part of your body has to do a ton of work and then something else is just kind of hanging out in space. Left hamstring up to the sky. You'll get the option to drop your knee in a moment, so left hamstring up to the sky. Some of you are twisting, I like that. Left hand down, right arm up to the sky. Left hand on the mat, right hand up to the sky. Press your left hamstring up. Half bind, arm behind your back, around the outside of your hip. Ooh, yeah. Keep breathing. Melt your shoulder blade down into place. Take one more breath, look up at the ceiling. Okay, drop your back knee, release your bind. And then reach for your back heel with your right hand. So you want the space just above your knees to be resting on the ground. If it feels like it's right on your kneecap, scoot your left leg back. Like above your knee. You can definitely use a strap to bring your heel in closer. You can definitely use a block for your left hand if it feels like you can't quite get your foot in the ground at the same time. And add your breath back in. So right foot flat on the ground. One of those cables through your big toe into the ground. And gently release your foot to the floor. Right palm to right thigh. And press your right thigh away. Open the hip. Make sure your hand's on your thigh and not your knee. Yeah, good adjustments. And look over your right shoulder. Ring yourself out. It's like a towel. It's got all this water and all this extra stuff in it. Ring it out. Ring it out. One more inhale here, twist on your exhale. Ring, 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 ring. Downward facing dog. Hands on the mat, step back. Getting juicy today. Deep breath in, let it out through your mouth. Big breath in, let it out. <laughs> Dan's dripping a lot. Last breath in, let it all the way out. Left foot warrior one. That's good. You're testing athletic clubs, so you can really bring it to their limits. Warrior one, rise up. Then warrior two, open up. If it can't hold your sweat, it's like, mm, maybe I should try something else. Lunge pretty deep. Just pause, catch the sweet spot in your warrior two, and then straighten your legs and turn your toes to the yellow wall. Interlace your fingers at your low back. If you've got a strap or a towel and you want to use that between your hands, go ahead. Now lift your heart up and then hinge down. Heart up and then hinge down. Let your hands spill overhead and they come as far as they come overhead. Worry less about your arms here and more about can you bend your knees and send your tailbone higher. Bend your knees and send your tailbone higher. It's like you make space one place in your body so you can send that space somewhere else that you need it. So you soften your knees and you make space for your tailbone to lift. You soften your toes and you give the strength to your heels to anchor down into the floor. Keep breathing, tip your tailbone up a little bit more. Yes. And release your hands to the floor. Turn your left foot to face the front. Lizard lunge. Lizard lunge. So make the little adjustments that you want to make. You can take your left leg out a little bit wider if you need some room. If it feels like you're kind of crunched in there, take your left foot out a little bit wider. Lots of breath here. This is the juicy stuff when you've burned off all the extra stuff and now there's space to play around with in your body. Now's the time to stay in the room. When your mind is taking you somewhere else, you use your breath and you come back. 
Now right palm down, left arm up to the sky, left hand up to the sky. Ring out. Sit a little lower in your hips, like drop your pelvis down towards the ground. Yeah. Juicy, juicy. Energize your fingertips like you're going to pull your arm way up out of your shoulder. All right, drop your back knee. Reach for your back foot with your left hand. Back foot, left hand. So you want the soft crease of your elbow to face the purple wall, and that'll make room for your shoulder to slide down your back. If your arm's twisted, there's no room. There's no wiggle room. Now look over your left shoulder. So it's your pose, and you get to choose if you need to scoot forward a little bit or pull your heel in a little bit closer. Play around with it. It's a malleable thing. Your practice is like that. It's going to feel different every single time you land in a pose, so listen to it. Release your foot. Let it come down. No slingshots. And then left palm on your left thigh. Press your left thigh away. Open the hip. Lots of juice on your thigh, like you could roll the meat of your thigh around the bone. I hear a couple of people breathing. Everybody breathe. Nice, downward facing dog. Your hips are going to feel so awesome after class. I can't wait for you. Take a long breath in through your nose. Let it out through your mouth. Make a crazy sound on the second one. Breath in. One more. Make this one count. Don't be afraid. Just do it. Yeah, come through to sit. Staff pose. Sometimes life is like that. You just have to make a weird sound and just get it out of your system. Staff pose. Flex your feet. Ah. Lower your back to the mat. You're in it now. It's happening right now. When you're right at the breaking point, that's when it happens. That's when your life is happening. That's when you want things to happen. Take bridge pose. Bend your knees and plant your feet. Bend your knees and plant your feet. Cables through your heels, cables in your toes, down into the ground. So you can interlace your fingers at your low back or take cactus arms. Lots of power in your legs. Make this one just as powerful as your wheel. Wrap your inner thighs towards one another like you're squeezing an invisible block. And lift your heart a little bit more. Lift your hips more. Awesome breath. Keep that going. Release, lower your hips. Breath still happens, knees side to side. It's one continuous flow all the way through. Take another bridge. Rise up, shoulder blades in the ground. So it's almost like you're a table here and your shoulders are two legs of the table and your feet are the other two legs. Lift yourself up, get really long. Keep breathing. What can you micro adjust here? Keep scanning your body over and over. What is asleep? What can I wake up? What needs to do a little bit of work here because something else is doing too much work? Take one more breath. Release, lower your hips down, knees side to side. Build the breath like a fire. Fire happens now, wheel pose. Hands up to the sky and tuck your fingertips under your shoulders and go up. So all that grounding, all those anchoring cables are there to help you out so the rest of your body can explode up into your pose. Like there's not even any extra thought around it because you're so in your body that your body is moving and you are along for the ride. Be here for four more breaths. Four more. You've got it in you. The breath can still flow. The pose can still happen. Then after four, tuck your chin and come down. Four. What a weird number. Why did I pick that? Knees side to side. Then go back up, another wheel. Just let it happen. You're up against your edge. Some of you are up against that point where you're like, ugh, I don't want to do another one. That's when you go. That's when it happens. Wrap your inner thighs together and keep breathing. That's all you have to do is breathe. Breathe and be in your body. 
One more in. Tuck your chin and come down on your exhale. You've got this. Take a breath in together. Reset. Breath out. Another wheel. Go. Yeah, it's funny when you get to the breaking point, when you're like, this is ridiculous. Go. Go up. Go up. Wheel of bridge. You can laugh. It's just yoga. Go up. Make it happen. Breathe. Be light. Be open. Let all the rest of that crab drop. One more breath. Tuck your chin. Come down. Oh, breath in. Breath out. Go again. Go. What? Go up, yogis. Go up. Ah, go up into Wheeler Bridge. Go, go, go. Time is now. It's happening now. Your life is happening now. Are you missing it? Are you missing it or are you here? Are you here in your body with everyone in the room? Are you building a community? Is it happening right now? Tuck your chin and come down. Supta Baddha Konasana. Supta Baddha Konasana. Eyes stay open. Look at one focal point. So whether it's laughter or tears or anger or whatever it is that's coming up, you're here for it. You're here. Now listen, you don't need to look. You can keep your eyes tethered on your one spot, but listen, use the heels of your palms right at the crease of your hips and press your legs away from you. So the heels of your palms, like the edges of your hands, press your hips down and away, like towards the windows, like you're trying to press your legs away from the rest of your body. Right in the crease, you can press your legs away from the rest of your body. Okay, now roll your wrists around, do some wrist circles. Then rest your hands wherever you want to rest them. Just pause for a moment. What does that feel like? What does it feel like to be really awake in your body? To come up against the edge? And you can hit your edge dozens and hundreds and thousands of times in your life, but if you never step over it, nothing's going to shift. You're going to get what you've always gotten because you're doing what you've always done. Step over. Bring your knees together and hug them into your chest. Rock around. Give yourself a squeeze. Give your low back a massage. Send your legs straight up into the air. Flex your feet. And start your breath now before you're making assumptions about what's about to happen. Breathe. You might not know. It could be something totally different. You have no idea. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Now interlace your fingers and point your fingers up to the ceiling. Interlace your fingers, point your fingers up. Yoga, yoga Ray Love Gun. Lift your shoulders off the mat and bring your hands on the outside of your right leg. Hands on the outside. Lower your left leg 30 degrees. Press. Breathe. It's super simple now. Just focal point and breathe. You're like, and abs, duh. 30 more degrees. I know, you do the work and the shift happens. It's a really simple equation. Hover your foot just above the ground. Lift your shoulders round up. Leg back up. Hands on the outside of your left leg. Whew, shoulders off the mat. Keep them up if you can. Right leg down 30 degrees. Flex your foot. Another 30. Through your heel, through each one of your toes. Send the cables out. Hover your foot just above the ground. Round your shoulders up like a Halloween cat pull in. Leg back up. Switch sides. You've got one more set on both sides. It's going to be the awesome set because you worked out the kinks on the first set. Lower your left leg down 30 degrees. Press, press, press through the whole sole of your foot. Another 30. You've got this. You've already got the muscle. It's already there. Hover just above the ground, round, squeeze it all in. Leg back up, hands on the outside of your left leg. It's the last one. Last set, 30 degrees with your right leg. More breath. Another 30. It's almost there. Relax your jaw, relax your face. 
Hover just above the ground, round up like a Halloween cat, pull your belly in, legs in the air, knees into your chest, give them a squeeze. Holy moly. Rock back and forth until you sit up. Take boat pose, just one boat. I promise, just one. Rock up, take your boat. You're building the container. Use the tapas, pull your low belly in, flex your feet. You can certainly grab the backs of your thighs if you want. Wide collarbones, go wide, yeah. Beautiful. Breathe in, breathe out. You've got two more breaths, in and out. One more breath, lift your chest. Downward facing dog. <sighs> Downward facing dog. Think about how amazing you're gonna feel once you step off your mat. So amazing. So good. So sweaty. Send your right leg up to the sky. Heel towards your butt, open your hip. Make a little extra space. You're just stretching it out. You can roll your ankle around. That sounds like a good idea. Do some ankle rolls here. Then bring your right knee to your right wrist for half pigeon. So I know there's a few people in the room that use half pigeon. They're like, yes, nap time. Not nap time. Stay here. Walk yourself down to the ground. So your thighs parallel with the edge of your mat. And then use a block or a towel to set your forehead on so that your neck is long and it can be part of your spine. Because even if you can get all the way down to the ground, sometimes when your forehead touches the ground, it pulls your neck out of alignment so it's not long like the rest of your spine. Just something to consider. So there's a lot of your body touching the ground now. Where are the cables? Where do you need them? Where do you need a little extra tethering, a little extra anchor to keep you here in your body? And that might be the anchor that you need from your breath to make that a cable to connect yourself to this moment. All the tools you need, you already have. Breath is there, the focus is there. All the muscle, all the anything. It's already here. Use what you need. And maybe you consider that you might have a few extra cables, a few extra tethers that you can take with you and use somewhere else in your life, because you've got plenty of them for your yoga practice. Where might you need a cable? Where do you feel like you're totally lost and disconnected? Downward facing dog, shake it out. Mm -hmm. 
Send your left leg up to the sky. Heel towards your butt, open your hip. Ankle rolls, or move your toes around, spread them out. Then half pigeon on this side, just as much time. Sneak over here. What do you need right now? Not like, what do you want, or what do you think you deserve, or it's not time for that, or what do you need? Downward facing dog. Move some things around. Make your way through to sit. Come into staff pose. Do your best to scoot your tailbone behind you, like you move your butt out of the way. So your tailbone can reach behind you, you can sit up really tall. Then take your right leg out to the right, and your left heel in towards your right thigh. Right leg out, left heel in. And then notice if you started to come back into the rounded spine, just use your, use your fingers to tuck your tailbone behind you. Fold over your right leg. It's a hinge, like a piece of paper folding in half. So if it's tight, that's okay. Bend your right knee a little bit and make it hinge like a piece of paper instead of like a round banana back. Go for length. Wanna do the rocks for me? Toes up to the ceiling. And keep your right hand where it is on your leg or on your toes, and then send your left hand straight up to the sky. So your chest is wide open. Wide open like your heart could touch the bricks. And then do your best to reach your left hand towards your toes. So you're only reaching as far as you can go that doesn't make your heart collapse down towards the ground. So just notice if it feels like it's kind of turning down towards the floor, go back up a little bit. Oh, 
Carve up towards the ceiling like your shoulder blades are going to serve it up. Rise back up and switch sides, left leg out, opposite heel in. Then make the adjustment again. Take your sit bones, untuck them, and fold over your left leg. Toes up to the ceiling. And even here, you can think about reaching your tailbone further back behind you. Further back. So as much as you reach forward and hold on to your calf or your toes or the strap or whatever it is you're holding on to, the more you reach your tailbone away from you. Left hand down, right arm straight up. Straight up to start so you can get a wide open chest because you made all that space there, so you want to use it. And then as much as you can, reach over. So it's just a leaning over to stretch out your sideways. If you start to fold to the ground, it takes the stretch out of your sideways. So even if your hand's straight up, you're still getting a benefit from it. Heart up to the ceiling. Are you still breathing? What are your fingers up to? Draw yourself back up. Both legs wide, wide leg straddle. Stagger with your neighbor if you need to. So start with bent knees. Everybody bend your knees. Bend your knees so you can sit up really tall, really tall. And then without rounding your spine, fold forward. So your hands can come down in the middle and you probably won't go that far and that's fine. Bent knees, long spine. Work on squeezing your shoulder blades together on your back. So if it feels like they're starting to round forward, your spine's probably rounding too. Tall spine, shoulder blades together on your back. Nice. Well, you can stay here or round your spine and just fold down the middle. You choose which one you want to work with. If one feels way easier than the other, I would do the one that doesn't feel easy. It's usually the one your body needs, the one you're like, nope, I'm going to do the other one. Rise back up, sit up tall, bring your legs back together, staff pose. Reach your arms up to the sky, tailbone back, fold over your legs, tailbone back. In fact, everyone fold down to wherever you're going to fold till, and then use your fingertips and untuck your butt while you're folded. Untuck your butt while you're folded, yeah, get really in there, now fold. The more you fold, the more you point your tailbone behind you. Toes up to the ceiling. Rise back up, sit up tall. Plant your palms behind your hips, so fingertips face forward, reverse tabletop. Fingertips forward, lift your hips up. So you can go with long legs and toes that point down or bend your knees with flat feet on the earth, either one. Lift your hips up. 
It's one last good shoulder stretch. Lift your heart up, lift your hips up. When you're like, yeah, that feels comfortable, lift a little higher than that. One more breath. Lower your hips, legs straight out. Bring your back to the mat. You can go slow or you can just lay down with no ceremony, that's fine. Ah. Flat on the ground, legs up in the air, Vipri to Karani, or shoulder stand. Or if you're dying for a headstand or a handstand right now, go for it. It's your opportunity to drain out. Your opportunity to come back to your drishti. If your mind's already starting to wander out of your practice, bring yourself back. Focus on one of your big toes. On one of your big toes. Send your breath all the way up to your feet and let it travel all the way back down to your lungs. Stay, stay. You're almost there. The pose happens. It starts to happen when you want to come out of it. So when you hit that fifth or seventh or tenth breath and shoulder stand, you're like, yep, that's my limit. Stay. Plow pose. So you've been working on this hinge at your hips all practice, so work on the hinge here. So long spine, send your tailbone up to the sky, so your spine's in a long straight line, even if your toes don't touch the ground. Deaf man's pose. Bend your knees, gently squeeze the sides of your head. Long spine, tailbone up to the sky. Hands to the floor and unwind one piece at a time. Knees into your chest, rock around. Take happy baby, soles of the feet up to the sky. Draw your knees way down by the sides of your hips. So rock back and forth, move yourself around, and then pause in stillness in your dead bud. Pause in stillness. Whole spine tethered to the ground, your whole body anchored right here. Bring your knees into your chest, give them a squeeze, and drop them over to the right. And look left, supine twist. If you're close enough to your neighbor, maybe you help them out and use your left foot to press the top of their left hip. You could do that, you could touch each other, it's okay. Or just lovingly pat each other, that was nice too. Bring your knees back to center, <laughs> switch. Look toward the yellow wall. Not forceful breath, just easy breath. Conscious breath. A breath that soothes, a breath that fills. If 
back to center, give your knees a squeeze, one final squeeze. Shavasana. Got your cold stone at the head of your mat for you to put on your third eye between your eyebrows or on your heart or on your chest. And if the stone never feels like a little too cold, you can put it right at the apex of your ribs, right where your sides of your rib cage meet together. It's a good place too. So make all the little adjustments, wiggle yourself around, get your feet in just the right spot, palms face up to the sky. Get all that last little bit out of your system so you can really melt into the floor. We really anchor down and know that every single time you step onto your mat, those cables are still there. Every time things are going crazy in your life and you feel like you're completely out of control or things are totally nuts and you have no idea how to get them back to center, you already have the tools to bring them back to center. You have those cables, those tethers. Use them.
Deepen your breath. Reach your hands high overhead and stretch long hands to feet. Get long, 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 long. And melt into the floor. Plant your feet on the earth and rock onto your right side. And with your eyes still closed, press down and rise up. Take your seat. Inhale, reach your hands up to the sky. Exhale, thumbs to your heart. Let's finish our class with five rolling ohms. So when you finish your first one, roll right into the second. Deep breath in. Ah. 